diagnosis on Hufanga? Um, tore some ligaments in his wrist. A multi-week? Yeah, it'd be at least a month, probably longer. Uh, we haven't, it could be, we haven't decided whether to do it or not, though. Get hurt. Um, during the game, um, had a bruise on his knee. Bruce. Yeah. Well, you guys have to say whether they're questionable today because it's Friday or do you have tomorrow? I don't think so. Unless someone messed up. I just Ron Burgundy this thing, so. <laughs> a lot of people make a lot about McDonald's defense and what happened last year on Christmas. What, what can you tell us about McDonald's scheme and, and what makes it special? Um, I mean, does a real good job mixing all the schemes up, fronts, coverages. Uh, his players play real hard. They're coached well. Their techniques are good, good tacklers, um, and they mix up the looks. What's well, different between that Seahawks squad and a Pete Carroll Seahawks squad? Um, I mean, the schemes have changed. Uh, they run different schemes. Seems like Geno Smith is throwing the ball probably, I think, maybe more than some people. He's throwing it more than any quarterback in the NFL. So how is he doing, and how much of their offense maybe revolves more around him than their running game in the past? Uh, it's still early, um, so you never know, but they definitely started out that way. Uh, I think Gino's doing a hell of a job. Yeah, he's got three big weapons in the pass game, including his tight ends also. His running back is as good as it gets also. So uh, they got some talent over there, and they can stretch the field, and Gino can get hot. Do you have any reaction to Robert Sala's dismissal, and have you guys exchanged texts or anything? Uh, I haven't yet just because of how backed up we've been. I mean, I sent him a text, but I haven't got to talk to him. And, yeah, I was pretty shocked. Um, you know, that stuff throws you off, especially. I think they're competing for first in the division this week. and. I think they're up there on defense and got a pretty good team and a chance to have a hell of a year. So uh, that was pretty surprising. What has um, Malik Mustafa done well so far, and how has he been in the sort of the communication aspect of his job? I think communication is one of the hardest things, especially for a young guy coming in. I think he's been getting better at that um, the more he's been out there. Um, I think you know just his lack of not hesitating. I think you guys saw that a little in preseason. Um, just with some of the hits he had, uh, especially you saw a couple in that Tennessee game from what I remember. And when he's come in, he's done the same stuff. I think he gets faster each week, just recognizing things and not breaking down and um, trying to run through his tackles. Do you have the same volume of plays and the same size of a playbook on a Thursday game as you do for a Sunday game? Uh, yeah, I'd say the same size. Um, you don't try to put in as much new stuff or things that take a while to get down. You know, sometimes we overwhelm guys on Wednesday, but you can repeat it on a Thursday and Friday and come back to it and eventually it sticks. Um, so you try not to do that with new stuff, but um, volume wise is much different. You talked about kind of a, a do no harm approach to special teams, which can be read as like, well, why would you want to make it as, as great as possible and make a difference? Um, is that an accurate reading and kind of what is your like philosophy as far as I guess what I'm referring to is sometimes you said, you know, we don't want them to screw it up. Um, yeah, I don't know if I always had the right words for that, but what I'm trying to say is you'd like to build a team to where you don't feel you have to return a kick, a punt, or have a fake kick or a fake punt, or you don't have to rely on something like that to get a win. Um, I like to feel that you um, feel like you can do it between the offense and defense of just beating someone. And um, I think in this league, one of the best ways to win games is to not lose a game, uh, to, to not find a way to lose it. I mean, a lot of games are given away. And uh, when it comes to special teams, with the amount of touchbacks there are and stuff, just extra points, getting a punt off, um, those are opportunities to lose it with any of those are blocked. Um, there's only so many special teams plays that go into a game. And so you don't want to be overly risky on trying to win it there when you're only going to have 10 to 15 plays. You take out all the touchbacks and stuff, it's even less than that. Um, so you don't want to go out of your way to um, to be risky to try to get your stuff there. You'd rather do it with people who are out there for 70 straight plays. Uh, can this be a galvanizing moment for your team? I understand it's really early, but you have a short week at Seattle and then kind of that mini-buy to just get yourselves right before the, the two home games before the buy, just like where you're at in the schedule. 
Yeah, and I mean, so many situations. I mean, losing our last two um, divisional games, having one this week's huge. Playing against Seattle is always huge. Going up there is always huge. Um, and then always in the NFL, it's it's tough to get ready for a Thursday night game, but I think everyone enjoys them because um, there's very rare, it's very rare that you get to sit back and kind of enjoy that for three days and watch the rest of the league. And, and they're a lot more fun when you win, and when you get to sit back and be pissed off for three days, it's not nearly as much fun. Uh, what is like we, we've asked these questions with you know, Robert and with D'Amico um, early in their tenures as defensive coordinator, but with, with Nick, is it kind of a similar thing, just kind of figuring things out and um, you know, how would you evaluate just the early part of his tenure as defensive coordinator? I think Nick's doing a real good job. I've been impressed with him since the beginning. Um, each week, I like how he handles um, the defensive staff. Uh, I like how they set up the practices, and I've liked his game plans. And so I've been real happy with Nick so far. The red zone, is it you know, creating space in the red zone? Is it more about your personnel, or is it quickness? What, what's the key to getting that space in that tight area? Everything. Um, wish I could give you guys a theme for the red zone, but um, you know, you get three tries when you're inside the 10. And depending on what you do, when we run the ball there, I think we need to be much more effective running it. Um, you know, when you run, run the ball twice, you'd like to get in and not just put one pressure third down on the, the pass game. Um, and when you do throw it more, then you got to make sure you come through with those, especially not having a negative play with those. So um, running the ball better takes a lot of pressure off, also gives some better passing looks. Uh, we've tried both and haven't been good enough with both, though. So um, it's all aspects of offense. A couple produ really productive games against Seattle last year. How would you, I guess, assess how he's performing specifically as a receiver? So um, I think Debo is doing a good job. I mean, I think, you know, he had his best game, you know, at least statistically right before he got hurt, you know, missed a week and a half and thought it was tough for him to come back for the New England game. But we were able, he was able to get out there and play and um, didn't get involved a ton last week. but. Uh, it's usually a matter of time with that stuff. That stuff comes full circle, and Debo's too good to not eventually have a big one. Do you have a timeline on Moody? Is, is IR a, a possibility? It's for a high ankle games? sprain, so usually with those, I usually say about a month. Sometimes they can surprise you and go quicker. Sometimes they can go longer. So we're not exactly sure yet. So IR is? IR is an option, yeah. Yeah, just with the how quick this has happened, having Huff in that situation where we got to decide, Mooney could be a possible decision. We have a number of guys already on it, so we're just trying to weigh in all that stuff. Talked a lot about <clears throat> Brock's ability to create with his feet, and scramble and buy time. And does the fact that he's doing it so much mean that you need to be doing a better job on offense to get the ball out of his hand? Um, sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. I mean, it goes both ways. It's um, you know, most of the ones that we're doing that are deeper plays. Um, when they deeper plays and they get deep people, and it's a three-man rush, they usually cover your checkdowns. Um, plays we've been pretty effective with, and when they don't do it, and I think that's where you see us hit some big crossers. Um, so, but yeah, there's times that you want to get rid of it quick, um, but people got to be open quick too, which usually has to do with blitzers. If people blitz and you get rid of it quick, you will get rid of it quick. You have to. Um, but when they don't, there's somebody's checkdowns are covered, and when your checkdowns are covered, I'm glad we have another option. All right, guys, thanks.